The midterm elections are just around the corner, and one Pennsylvania district could influence who controls the House. One America's Amanda Brohanty sat down with the Republican candidate for, for a district uh, that could have some crucial effect on how the state turns out. Take a look. He comes from a working family, and from winning an Olympic gold medal to running a family farm, this political outsider has seen his entire district by bicycle before going into midterms on November 6. Running in Pennsylvania's Battleground District 7 for the U.S. House of Representatives is Marty Nostein. Following the newly revised district lines and earlier than expected retirement of Republican Charlie Dent, Lehigh Valley could determine if Democrats can take back control of the House. Previously characterized as being center-right, the newly redrawn district voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016. Joining me now is Republican candidate Marty Nostein. Marty, how are you doing? We're in the final leg of this thing. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be part of the show. Great. So you have conservative values and agree with much of the president's agenda. In a district that can go either way, it's highly competitive. How are you appealing to the moderate Democrat? Well, the moderate Democrat is somebody I can really relate to. Uh, these moderate Democrats are hardworking, blue-collar individuals, and we have quite a few of them in this district. These are these are hard workers who drive backhoes, drive farm tractors, work in cement factories, and they really re relate to the president and the president's agenda, which is something that's very energizing. I've been in every corner of this district, and I got to tell you what: there's a lot of Democrats that are just as motivated as uh, I should say moderate Democrats as motivated as uh, the far left socialist Democrats as well. So. This is going to be a really tight election. It's going to be a very close election. We just need to energize everybody, make sure everybody understands what's at stake on November 6th. Great. Like you said, it's a highly energized election, and you do understand that hardworking individual. Now, I do want to talk about health care. Your Democrat opponent, Susan Wilde, released an ad which some have called an attack ad. In fact, you said that it's trying to scare people. Let's listen to that ad. To think about losing my health care is just as frightening as being diagnosed with cancer. I don't understand why Marty Nostein wants to take away our insurance. It keeps me awake at night. Now, you have talked about repealing parts of the Affordable Care Act, but what's your reaction to that ad? Well, that, that ad hurts. It hurts me personally. My family's had some battles with cancer. Uh, my in-laws, my sister, all cancer survivors. I personally buried friends that lost their battle with cancer. And this ad is even more disturbing because of this. The lady in the ad works for Susan Wilde, my opponent. It's her personal paralegal. So is Susan Wilde not providing adequate, adequate insurance for her employees or, or not? But at the end of the day, I've said this many, many times, and I'll say it again here on the show. I will always keep pre-existing conditions in play here. I will not vote for anything that would take away pre-existing conditions. Uh, that doesn't stop the Democrats, though, from running these ads. This is a scare tactic. They're running these same cookie-cutter type ads throughout the, throughout the entire country trying to scare voters. And it's not going to work because they're lies. So you do have a personal connection to these pre-existing conditions, and I want to emphasize what you just said. You do plan to protect those. Now, I do want to switch gears. You were accused of sexual misconduct last October, and I do want to emphasize you have been cleared of this allegation, and it's been called a meritless claim by some. With the recent appointment of Justice Brett Kavanaugh, we saw him accused of misconduct as well, and with members of Congress echoing the same sentiments that you expressed about the allegations against you, calling them a smear campaign. Can you tell us how you felt watching a similar situation unfold with the justice? Yeah, so my situation, uh, I announced my run for Congress uh, October 19th. Uh, an anonymous tip was placed uh, with USA Cycling 11 days after my, my announcement for Congress, stating in the most broadest of terms, sexual misconduct on or around the year 2000. That was it. That was all that was told. Well, Safe Sport, uh, investigated this, found nothing, called it meritless. Our local police department received the same anonymous tip, investigated it fully, found meritless. Our local district attorney, same thing. The difference between me and Brett Kavanaugh, there wasn't even a victim in my situation. This is a third party anonymous tip, somebody from the shadows alleging that something happened. So Kavanaugh's has a little bit more uh, detail to it. But at the end of the day, when he was there defending himself, I felt the exact same way. When you get falsely accused of something, it hurts. And when you get falsely accused of something like this and they try to destroy somebody, it hurts even more. It doesn't only hurt the individual who's been accused, it hurts their entire family. 
And I feel for Brett Kavanaugh, and I also feel for Dr. Ford, because I truly feel like something happened to Dr. Ford. I do. And we need to listen to the women's voices in these things. But, but uh, these allegations cannot be used as a tool to damage people, because what it's doing at the end of the day is hurting the true victims, and that needs to stop. Okay, like you said, it's hurtful on all sides, and this was an accusation that was 11 days after your campaign. So let's talk about results. What results can voters expect if you're elected? Well, we're going to continue with this great economy. You know, we're going to make sure the middle class tax cuts are kept permanent. In my region right here, you know, we have a nice buzzing economy. People are, have, have jobs. People are getting well-paying jobs. We're seeing a, a, quite a growth. People like this. And we need to keep that going. We also need to fix our health care program. But economy, make sure we fix our health care issues, make sure that we keep our community safe. For my opponents running on sanctuary cities and open borders, that can't happen. She wants to abolish ICE, that can't happen. Listen, I'm going to go to Congress. I'm going to work hard every single day. I'm going to make sure the people of this district have a representative that they can be proud of, somebody they can trust, somebody knows is going to work hard. I've done it my entire life. I've lived in this district. My family has been in this district five generations. I've never let this district down now, and I'm not going to do it as a congressman. So basically, it sounds like you're going to get that gold medal for the United States. Well, political outsider, family man, the Blade, Marty Nostein, running for Congress, and Pennsylvania's Lehigh Valley District 7. We've got your campaign link up for those who'd like to learn more. Thank you so much for joining me. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube. And call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.